Well, like, um, like David, we did some traveling over spring break, uh, spring break for AU at least. Uh, Kelly and I had the opportunity. We didn't go to Cuba to do mission work, but we did go to the Caribbean. And uh, we, went to, we went to Puerto Rico and had a chance to just get away. It was a kind of an anniversary, delayed anniversary celebration. And so we had the opportunity to do that and had a great time. One of the things I noticed as we were in the airport, you know, as you, if, if you've traveled, if you fly, you notice that there are some people that fly, and, and they're just, they're good at it. You know what I'm saying? There are these people who, they have, they have like, they, they only have carry-on bags. They don't check baggage, right? They only have carry-on bags. They have little bitty suitcases that they're able to pack everything they need in. They just kind of zip through the airport. They have any kind of, you know, they have this little carry-on, and they have like a little bitty shoulder bag, and they just, they just look perfectly natural walking through the airport. Well, we're not those people. Like, we're, we're not, we're those people that you see in the airport and you go, oh, those poor souls. Look at, look at them carrying all those bags. And, and why are they checking so much baggage? Like, that's, see, that, this, this is the kind of suitcase that we carry to the airport to check in. And, and in actuality, it's, it's, it wasn't this suitcase that we took because our bags are currently out in, in they're, they're, they're sequestered outside because we're afraid they got some bugs in them. So they're outside and they're, and I know it's raining today. But they're in, they're in plastic bags, and we're trying to kill off the bed bugs. So, Niels, your suitcase will be returned to you um, <laughs> later. Yeah. yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought you might say that. We're, 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 uh, we're, not such, we're, we're not such good travelers. We, have, we carry a lot of baggage, which, which I was a little concerned on the last leg of our journey. We landed in the, on the bigger island of Puerto Rico, and then we went to a smaller island. And to go to that smaller island, you had to get on a smaller airplane. And I began to get a little concerned. You know, they always weigh your luggage, right? And so we have to put our luggage up there and, you know, get somebody to spot us and help us carry it up there to pick it up. And then they weigh our luggage and they write down the weight. And then they said, what's the weight of your carry-on bag? It's like, carry-on? What, are you serious? So we have to put the carry-on bag and they weigh that. And then they asked us, how much do you weigh? <laughs> and I realized pretty quickly, this is not one of those instances where you undersell your weight. This is not one of those things where you go, you know, about 10 pounds under. Because I realize that they're seeing how much the plane can carry. And so I'm listening to Kelly, don't lie. Don't, don't lie. Because they might have lied, these other people on the plane. And we want to make sure that we're good on the whole weight restriction. You see, a lot of us, we carry around a lot of baggage in our lives. And, and, and most of us, we, we kind of tend to lie about it, right? We pretend that we don't really have a lot of baggage. We, we carry a lot with us. In fact, while you might not have a big suitcase like this with you, I would imagine that, that many of us carried in some baggage today when we came into this place. We carried in some stuff, some of the burdens and the difficulties and the anxieties of life. And usually you can tell by looking at people if they're carrying that sort of baggage, kind of like the people in the airport, like us in the airport, you know, where we're, we're kind of just like ugh, trudging along, just barely making it, looking for the walking stairway, you know, the little escalator on ground thing, like we're just hoping to get on that. Most people kind of walk through life looking like that because they're carrying around so much baggage. And perhaps you know what that looks like because you've seen it in the mirror. And, and you know what it looks like because it's you. And you say, man, I, I am just carrying so many worries, so many burdens and so many difficulties. Well, if that, if that fits you today, if that describes you, if you, you resemble that remark, then I, I have a passage for us that we're going to look at in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5, and we're going to look at verses 5 through 7, and we're really going to concentrate on verse 7 and just kind of take it apart and really, really look at every single word in verse 7. But let me read verses 5 through 7 to kind of give us a little bit of a, of a run-up to see what we're looking at and dealing with here in verse 7. Now, Peter's writing to the early church, and he's writing to folks who are, who are suffering, who are dealing with challenges and difficulties, and, and, and really even on a grander scale perhaps than what we are currently dealing with. We're, he was talking to people who were either currently or about to face major persecutions, the potential for being imprisoned or even worse for their faith. And so as he writes to them, as he talks about anxieties and suffering, he's not writing this in an abstract theoretical way. He's writing to real people who were really hurting, who were really dealing with the issues of life, just as we are. So let, let's look together at 1 Peter chapter 5, and we'll begin in verse 5. We'll look through verse 7. And he says this, And young men in the same way be submissive to those who are older. And now he's, he's kind of working his way, kind of like a, 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 you, know, you throw a rock into a pond and it kind of, it kind of circles out. 
And he's worked his way from talking to elders, he's talking to those who are shepherds, then he talks to those who are older, and then those who are younger, as it begins in verse 5. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. And then he says, all of you, which really broadens the circle out to include everybody in the early church, and includes all of us as well. All of you, clothe yourself with humility toward one another, because... God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Here he quotes from the Old Testament. Then in verse 6, he says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And then verse 7, where we're going to camp out, Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. This is an incredible admonition, instruction. This is an an incredible tip for us as we consider moving through our daily lives carrying so much baggage walking around with so many burdens and anxieties and we see in God's word that we're we're told quite clearly that we are to cast all of our anxiety on him because he cares for us now, now let's take this apart a little bit you might say well that's pretty simple I get that well let's take it apart and let's really feel it a little bit let's let's look and let's begin by looking at the word anxiety. Well, when Peter talks here about anxiety, he's talking about burdens and, and issues. And, and I, I wonder today, as we think about anxiety, what sort of burdens and issues did you carry in with you today? Kind of like the, the, the credit card commercials, you know, where the Vikings ask, what's in your wallet? Well, I want to know today, what's in your bag? What, what did you carry in in your bag today? In fact, I, I brought a few things in this very heavy bag. I'm going to attempt to place this bag up on the lectern. And the lectern might not be available to you next week because of this, but we'll see how it works, David. I just want to warn you. Ah, all right, we're all good. No, oh, oh, hey. I might need you to spot up here. No, not really, that's good. I think it's balanced now. If this falls, then sorry, it's bad news. All right, so let's see, what's, let's see what we have in the bag. What sort of anxieties might you be facing today in your life? Let me give you some suggestions. Perhaps you already know of several in your mind. Perhaps, here's, here's one. This is, this is, well, we'll start with the Vikings. What's in your wallet? Um, this, is, this is my wallet. And as I indicated, we just went on vacation. So there's a lot of stuff over here in the credit card receipt pile. And there's not much over here in the actual money part of the, the wallet. And so perhaps for you, as you think about anxieties, perhaps it starts with what you're sitting on in your wallet. And you're thinking about all the, the money that you don't have, all the bills that are coming, and then the resources that are unavailable to pay those bills. So perhaps as you think about anxieties today, immediately you think about your bank account or your checking account. What other things do, do we have that we deal with anxieties? Maybe you're, maybe you're a student Maybe you're a middle school student or a high school student or a college student, and maybe, maybe your burden is ugh, your homework that you deal with. I borrowed this from my son. Son, what is in this bag? Good lands. Um, I, I, maybe we don't need to work out anymore because you get to work out every day if you carry this to school. Um, maybe you, I'm kidding about that. We're still working out. Um, so, so maybe for you, your burden is just that you have schoolwork that you're trying to accomplish, and you have all these teachers that think that you know, yours, theirs is the only class that you have, and so you have all sorts of papers and stuff to complete and exams, and, and you're just overwhelmed by the burden of this. Whether you're a, a, a middle school student, a high school student, a college student, whatever it might be, that might be the anxiety or the burden that you are carrying. Perhaps for you, the anxiety or the burden that you're carrying has to do with with some medication. Perhaps it's it's health issues that you're facing, or maybe health issues that someone in your family is facing. And that that has just created a huge burden for you as you try to maybe take care of someone, or maybe take care of yourself, and and to try to get healthy, to, to get back to a point of normalcy in your life. And so perhaps for you, the burden is has to do with your health related issues. Or or maybe maybe the burden has to do with Maybe it has to do with family. This, this is a picture of, of family, extended family. And, I, and my mom's here today. I'm not saying that my family is a burden, mom. That's not what I'm saying. This is just an example that was up on the, and I knew that if I pulled Kelly's family's pictures off, then that would just be bad. So, um, but sometimes, sometimes family creates some anxiety, right? Maybe your family, just your little family, sometimes your extended family creates all sorts of anxieties and burdens and difficulties. And sometimes those family burdens are things that you just really can't, you, you really can't change. You kind of have to just deal with and live with and work within. Perhaps your, your concerns are, well, question mark, that could be just anything, but perhaps your concerns are the future. 
And, and what lies next? What, what's going to happen next? What's coming for you? Perhaps you're dealing with looking at getting a job or, or getting a new job or, or, again, some of those financial issues we talked about. Maybe for you, it's you're about to graduate from high school or college and you're looking at what's next on the horizon. And that can be some stressful times. So as we, as we think about anxieties, I want to ask you as I began, when I opened up the bag, what's in your bag? What's in your wallet? What is it that you are carrying? What did you bring with you to the party today? What is it that, that you brought in rolling perhaps behind you or maybe on your shoulders that's causing you anxiety? Because what we're told in this text, what we get from this passage that we're to cast all of our anxiety on him. You notice that little bitty tiny word there in verse 7, cast all your anxiety on him. I think, I think sometimes we toss a little bit at God and we pick something out of the bag and we go, okay, God, you can have this. I'll, I'll toss that to you. But, but we don't give him everything in our lives. And the admonition that Peter gives us, this word of instruction and encouragement, is that we're to cast all our anxiety on him. Now, now let's, let's continue working backwards a little bit in the text. Let's go to that first word, cast, or in other translations, casting. What does this mean, we're to cast? Well, well, let's talk about that word. There's a couple of different definitions, one that we might think of initially and one that is a better definition, perhaps. First of all, how many of you, how many of you fish? How many of you are, are fisher, fisher men, fisher women? I'm raising my hand just to show you what to do because I'm not one. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, no, so casting, those of you who fish, you, you might recognize the, the term casting, like you cast a line. Now, we saw something interesting. We were in Puerto Rico. We were, we were driving, going, looking for a sunset. We were on this pier, and all these people were casting. They didn't have the, the, the typical fishing line. They, they, just had like, they just had like a spool of line, and they were just sitting on the, the, the pier just throwing the line out, and I guess because they were already at the ocean. I don't know. I mean, they were like, well, here we are. We don't need to go any further. We're at the ocean. So they're throwing it out, and and casting, that's one way we might think of it, as we think about getting rid of what the anxieties and burdens we have, we're to cast those off. And so the idea of casting, that makes, that makes a little bit of sense, right? But the problem with that understanding, that definition of casting, is that that's exactly what many of us do. We, we cast it out, but then what happens when you're fishing? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm just speculating here because I don't really do this. But what do you do? You, you reel it back in eventually, right? You, you bring the line back to you. You bring the hook back to you, hopefully with something on the other end. That's the idea, that you're going to actually catch something. You don't just cast and throw it all out there. So that definition, that understanding isn't exactly what Peter was going for, even though he himself was a fisherman. That really wasn't the, that really wasn't the definition that he, he wanted to spark in our mind. Because, see, the problem is that with our anxieties, our tendency is to do just that. We say, God, you know what? You're right. I need to, I need to hand over my financial burdens to you, and we cast it out to him, and we go, all right, God, you take it. And the next day, then we reel it back in, put it back in our pocket and say, okay, I got it now. It's under control. Our family issues, we cast that out, and then the next day we go, oh, let me dabble with that a little bit more. Maybe I got it figured out. And we pull it back in. That's not the casting that Peter was speaking of here when he gave this instruction. No, what he was talking about actually dealt more with putting off or, or actually putting on to something else, more like the image of a beast of burden, you know, a donkey, Right? A, a donkey, what they would do is that they would cast their stuff on the donkey to carry their stuff so that they didn't have to carry it. Why? Because it was heavy, because it was cumbersome, because it was difficult. And so they would take their load, their burden, and they would cast it on this beast of burden. And they would let the donkey carry the load. Why? Because they couldn't carry it themselves. They recognized that the donkey was stronger and able to do it. Now, this is probably a really bad illustration because in this illustration, God is the donkey. But God wants us to cast our cares on him. He says that he is the beast of burden. He is the one who will take our stuff, our junk, the things that we can't handle, the things that are too big for us, too grand for us, even the things that are so small on our plate that they're just annoyances. God says he can handle all of that stuff. And he says, cast it all on me. So take your big heavy load, take your bag, and put it over on God. Now it's on balance, we almost lost it there. Take it and put it over on him. We are to cast all our anxiety on him. Not just some of it, but all of it. Now, the, the, the line there right after anxiety, cast all our anxiety on him. 
We're to give it over to him. Well, before we get to that, let me go back to casting for just a moment, because there's a couple of things about casting our anxieties that we need to, we need to recognize. First, first thing about that is that it has to be very intentional. I think my Bible's in the bag. That's not because my Bible's a burden. That's just a needed place to sit it. Okay, first of all, if we're casting our stuff, we have to be very intentional and very purposeful about getting rid of it. I don't know about you, but most of my worries, my struggles, my trials, my difficulties, they don't just go away. Do yours just go away? Like you go to sleep at night and then you wake up in the morning and they're gone, just like osmosis. You just leave them on your pillow and it's great. It's gone, kind of like the tooth fairy. That, that's not really how it works. We have to intentionally and purposefully cast these things off. It doesn't happen by accident. We have to reach a point where we say, God, I can't handle this. I need to hand it over to you. Now, our tendency is to reel it back in, as I already demonstrated, or our tendency is just to grab on tight and say, no, I can take care of this. No, I can deal with this. Kind of like, you know, in the summer, spring, when you're, when you're driving and there's a grasshopper gets on your windshield? Not like when they're splatted on your windshield. No, I'm talking about when they're still alive. Like a grasshopper, have you ever had it where a grasshopper was hanging on to your windshield wiper? And you start off and you're driving about five miles an hour. And you're thinking to yourself, you should get off. Like you should really get off. But what does the grasshopper do? They don't get off. They hold on. Like, oh no, I can do this. I can ride this car. I can ride this protege. No problem. No, it doesn't work out very well. I mean, they're fine at five miles, 10 miles. I don't know. I haven't clocked it. Maybe 15, 20 miles. But once you get up 35, 40 miles an hour, that grasshopper, he's not hanging on anymore. What happens? He is gone and then he splats. See, it would be better for him to let go at the beginning than to try to latch on and hang on. See, that's how it is with our anxieties and our burdens. We have to intentionally let them go. We can't just say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to hold on to this. I got this. I can fix it. I can, I can make this work. Because guess what? It's only going to get bigger. It's only going to go faster. It's only going to make the splat even worse. So we need to let go intentionally and purposefully casting our anxiety on him. Now, another part of that casting is that we... It requires, and this is something we really struggle with, at least I do, I don't know, maybe, maybe you don't struggle with this. It requires humility. It requires recognizing that we can't handle it on our own. If we back up in our passage here, and I told you we're kind of getting a running start here, back in verse 5, really the, the key theme through these verses is humility. And, and as, as Peter writes, he says, kind of the middle of verse 5, all of you clothe yourself with humility toward one another. Because, why? Because God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to whom? To the humble. And then he says again, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Humble yourself. That sounds so simple, doesn't it? Just be humble before God. But humility, man, that's a challenge. Because humility requires that we acknowledge that we can't deal with it. And then we have to give it over to God. And maybe it's the whole American way, but we like to be able to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, don't we? We like to be able to say, you know what, I did it. I took care of it. I fixed it. But if we're to follow this admonition, we have to be humble and recognize that we can't do it. You know, that's really the big overarching story of this whole book, is that we can't do it. I mean, the big issue that we all are trying to fix is this whole sin problem. And we keep trying to fix it and trying to fix it and trying to fix it. But what we find in the story of the gospel and the good news of Jesus is that we can't fix it. But God has fixed it through his son, Jesus. God is able. We are not. And when we come to that recognition, then we humbly cast our cares, our burdens, our anxieties on him. And the really cool part of that is is that when we cast our anxieties on him, when we humbly, purposefully cast them on him, he is able to handle all things. He is able to take care of any problem, no matter how big, no matter how small. God is the creator of the universe. He is the one who set this this course in motion. He is the one who controls The stars in the sky, he's the one who controls the depths of the oceans. 
had a chance in, in Puerto Rico to do some snorkeling, looking at the bottom. I mean, it is fascinating to consider all of the area and the land on this earth that we can't even get to because it's so deep in the oceans. God controls all of that. He's in control of all things. So we're to cast our anxieties on him because he is able to work in any and every circumstance. Think about this. Is there ever a circumstance in your life that you say, God, I want you to take this. And God scratches his head and says, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. Why don't you keep it? I I don't know. I'm not sure. God never does the whole, where are you going to eat thing, right? When you ask your spouse, where are you going to eat? I don't know. Like we never turn something over to God and go, God, what are you going to do with this? I don't know. It beats me. You take it. I, I don't know. I don't know. God is able to work in every situation, in every circumstance, in everything in your life. God is bigger than whatever you're facing. So whatever's in your bag, go back to this, whatever's in your bag, whatever you brought with you, there's nothing in here that's too big for God. There's nothing that you're going to pull out the question mark about your future, that God is going to go, hmm, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it works out. God knows the future. He's already written the future. He has it all under control. There's no surprises to him. We don't hand over something to God and God says, where did that come from? He knows all things. God is able to take everything that we give to him. So that's one, that's one problem that we have sometimes. One problem that we have sometimes, I think, is that we're not exactly sure, is God really able to deal with this? Well, that's just silly. We should recognize God is able to deal with all things. There's a second part, too, in, in, that we have a concern about, and this one is, is maybe a little more legitimate for us. The first concern is do we, we think to ourselves, you know, can God take care of these problems? The second concern that we come to is, does he want to? Like, like will he? Like, does God really want me to give him all the junk that I'm dealing with? Or does, does he really want what's in this bag? Because I know what's in this bag. I carry it around. I can smell it all the time. It's just horrible. Does he really want this? Well, well the last line of verse 7 that we're taking apart is very profound and very important. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. There's another translation of this, a Phillips translation that says it this way, because you are his personal concern. You are God's personal concern. So one question we have is, is God able to deal with what I have, my junk? Is he able to handle my financial issues, my job issues, my family issues? Can he handle that? And the answer to that is yes. God is able to do all things. But then the second question we come to, is God willing? Is he willing to take my junk? Is he willing to work in my life? And the answer to that is a resounding yes as well. Why? Because we are his personal concern. We are his personal concern. He is able and he is willing. When my dad passed away back in 2006, um, it was a rough time for our entire family. Um, and particularly for my grandmother, my grandmother who, who's still living, who's 90, uh, turned 90 in December. And during the immediate aftermath of that, that loss that we faced, in the, fir- in the first few days after that, we were, Kelly and I were talking to my grandmother, and we were trying to just, just to talk with her and to help her as she was processing this loss of her only son. And she, she said something in the realm of, well, well who's, who's going to take care of me? And Kelly and I, in that that conversation, said, look, we will take care of you. And And I said, look, you are my responsibility. And I said, I don't know that that sounds very good. And she said, no, that's okay. That's okay to be someone's responsibility. I said, you are my responsibility. Now, She's 90 and in many ways kind of still takes care of herself some, but you know, I'm available (laughs) and I'm trying to look out for her because I feel that's a responsibility. The tie-in in this analogy is that you are God's responsibility. He says, I am going to take care of you. I am able, I have the ability, and I am willing because you are my personal 
concern. Another brief story, several years ago when my kids were younger, before we left Texas, when the big kids were younger, um, Kenzie was probably eight or nine, Carson was maybe six or seven, we went on a bike ride, and we rode down to their school, and we, we, we were riding, and we went over this, there was this little bridge at the school, and I don't, I'm really not even sure why there was a bridge there, because there certainly wasn't any water, we were in Texas, but um, there was a bridge, so we went over this little bridge, and, and we were going over this little bridge, and there were these, there were these kids that were probably, they were probably two or three years older than Kinsey at that point, and, um, and they were like, not even middle school, like maybe first year of middle school. And they were standing on the bridge, and I kind of, I really, I barely even noticed them. Like they were kind of just standing there, kind of like trying to look tough, like middle school boys try to look tough, you know, which is kind of funny. But they were trying to look tough. And so we go across the bridge, and like I said, I kind of really didn't even notice it. They move out of our way reluctantly, and we go across the bridge, and we get to the other side. And we, we stop to take a break, and Kinsey says, I was kind of a little bit worried. Worried about what? I was kind of, kind of a little bit worried about what? So I was kind of a little bit worried that those guys on the bridge were going to bully us. Those guys? Were going to bully us? Now, I want you to understand, I don't go around picking fights with middle school boys. I don't. I don't do that. I want you to understand that I, I'm not really like, you know, mixed martial artist type guy or anything. But if those three little middle school guys had tried to bully my kids on the bridge, it would have been ugly. I, I probably would have gotten arrested. I mean, no, th no there was, if any bullying was going to happen, it was going to be the opposite direction. There was no bullying taking place on that bridge that day. And I think that story encompasses what this verse tells us, that God is willing and able to take care of us. And I think that sometimes as we go through life, we are worried about the bullies on the bridge. And, and we're living our life cowering in fear of these bullies, these anxieties that we're carrying around with us. And we say to God, God, this stuff is just bullying me. And our Father in heaven looks down and he says, that? that you're, you're worried about that? Really? <laughs> I, I created the universe, put the stars in place, I own a cattle on a thousand hills. I, you're worried about that? Really? <laughs> We need to obey the admonition that we find in Peter's letter. We, we need to cast our anxiety on him because he cares for you. You are his personal concern. And if you ever doubt that you are God's personal concern, you need only to look back to that day on Calvary where Jesus gave his very life as a sacrifice for our sins. Because that day stands as a billboard for all eternity. That God took out this sign in eternity and said, they are my personal concern. I am so concerned with the humanity that I created that I will give my son as a sacrifice that they might live and have relationship with me. That billboard reminds us forever and ever and ever that God is willing and that he is able. So my challenge for you today is what's in your bag? What did you bring into this place? And what do you need to cast on him so that you can walk out with a much lighter load? Let's pray together. Most gracious Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your awesome grace and God we don't comprehend well we don't comprehend the depths of your power and your might we, we, we just begin to scratch the surface as we see what you reveal to us in your word but we recognize just how great and how mighty and how powerful you are and and at the same time God we we barely even begin to grasp the depths of your grace and your love and your concern for us. Father, help us today to cast our stuff on you. God, that's what you tell us to do. That's what you desire for us. And you, you, you tell us, Lord, you, Jesus said that we can't add a day to our life by worrying about it. But Lord, when we give it to you, you take control. You take over. 
And so, Father, we, we hand over these things to you. And, Father, I pray today that your spirit would work and move in the hearts and the minds of your people. Give them the freedom to give away the stuff they brought in with them today. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We pray for your spirit to work mightily in this time. It's in the powerful name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. As we sing, I challenge you to hand over whatever burdens you have. Perhaps you need to come and if you need to kneel here at the altar that's available to you, perhaps just where you are in your seat, you are going to just hand over your burdens. This is your time to, to deal with God. Don't delay an appointment, an opportunity to get rid of the junk that you're carrying. Take advantage of the opportunity God gives you right now today.